Welcome. In this presentation, we're going to be discussing uh, cabin management uh, as it pertains to uh, pepper development. The first um, thing uh, in, in getting ready for the calving season is you want to make sure that, that you're prepared, having all your equipment available, uh, having your facilities ready uh, so that you can readily address any problems that, that you may have, such as dystocia or, or mother meat issues, etc. So, so just, just a quick um, time frame ahead of time just to make sure that you've got everything uh, that you need to handle the situation. When we talk about calving uh, heifers, the first important part is, is to actually recognize when, when a heifer is going in, into labor, and, and there's, there's three different stages of labor that a, that a heifer goes through. The first is, is what we call stage one, is when that um, uterine contractions first begin, uh, that cervix starts to, 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 to dilate and the uterus tries to move that, that fetus up into the uh, birth canal. Usually this takes about about four to eight hours uh, for a, a, a heifer to go through. A, a mature cow will go through it much faster, uh, but a heifer usually four to six, maybe sometimes up to eight hours for this to happen. Once that fetus is reaches the birth canal, then that heifer will move into what we call stage two labor. And this is typically seen uh, as, as the active delivery of the calf. The, the calf will be um, uh, expelled uh, through the uh, uh, strong contractions of, of with an abdominal press as well as the uterine contractions, very active labor uh, for the cow, and, and the, you'll be able to see various uh, parts of the calf as, as that calf is delivered. Typically, this should happen in, in again about two to four hours, and, and heifers uh, more likely to be up into that three to four hour time frame. Uh, stage three labor is, is after that, that calf is born, uh, we go into stage three labor, and, and that is uh, what happens in stage three is, is the placenta is, is delivered. Typically, this takes about six hours. Uh, and, and, but we really don't consider it to be a, a major issue, you know, even until up towards 12 hours uh, that we really can have to uh, maybe do something to address that retained placenta after 12 hours. Uh, dystocia, when we're talking about, about calving, dystocia just means that we have a difficult birth. Uh, and, and so that can be caused by, by basically two different problems. Either, either the, the, the heifer is having a problem, such as an undersized dam, uh, heifer that didn't get a, quite enough of nutrition as she was growing, has, has, has a small pelvis and she's undersized, uh, some uterine and nursery problems which may have to do with, with her stamina. If, she, if she's uh, poor nutrition, she may not have the energy to do this, uh, she may not uh, be able to, to go through the normal birthing process. And then calf problems, an oversized fetus, if you just breed your heifers to too big of a, of a bull, um, uh, you know, or, or you may have some, some uh, uh, malposition problems where you've got an abnormal presentation. That's preventing that calf from being delivered properly. Well, why we worry about dystocia is, is a it's going to have a, an effect on the calf, and well, one of our purposes of, of, of heifer development is to have a heifer that that gets pregnant, uh, weans a calf, uh, and then continues to stay pregnant uh, uh, to get pregnant and, and, and wean calves throughout her, her production life. And if if she starts losing calves early on. Uh, then she's not going to be a profitable animal for you. So uh, if we can decrease dystocia, we have a better chance of having a healthy calf. So, so on the calf, the dystocia is going to decrease the ability for that calf to, to absorb colostrum and, and, and get its immune system functioning. Uh, because of the stress of that, they're going to be more uh, uh, at risk for infectious diseases. And again, if it's a prolonged dystocia, that calf's not going to be able to stand and, and regulate its body temperature and those types of things. Uh, also for the dam, uh, dystocia decreases its, its, its return to estrus and, and, and the conception rate. So again, if we can prevent dystocia, we're going to have a better chance of keeping that heifer in our herd. This just depicts the normal uh, presentation of a, of a calf at calving, uh, what we call the an normal anterior presentation. The calf is, is being delivered with, with both feet and its nose uh, coming forward uh, in, a, in an upright position, meaning that the, the, the calf is in a head is on top uh, and, and the calf is not upside down. Um, any other uh, presentation would be what we consider an abnormal presentation, whether it's a backwards calf or, or a leg back or, or the head back, those types of things are all, all types of abnormal presentations. Some of the rules of thumb I use for giving assistance and in, in, uh, anytime you give assistance that you know that can be, be, be better beneficial and, and there's, no, there's no real detriment to giving assistance to a heifer early on, you've got a better chance of getting a live calf and, and decreasing that impact of dystocia on both the calf and, and the heifer. So, so it does, doesn't hurt to get uh, be aggressive at, at, at providing assistance to heifers. Uh, some of the things that 
or you may want to provide assistance is if that stage one labor goes beyond that eight hours. So once we go beyond that, uh, then, then we have a, a risk of, of that cap or that heifer not ever moving into stage two. And, and sometimes as a result of a, of, a, of a breech calf or something like that where that calf cannot get into the pelvic canal, into the birth canal, uh, and stimulate that stage two uh, 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 labor. Um, if, if the water bag or, or the calf, the, the calf's feet or, or nose are, are visible uh, for two hours and we're not making any progress, particularly if that cow is quick, uh, stop pushing and is no longer in, in labor, then that's an indication that something is going wrong and that, that cow has given up or is not able to progress that calf on out. Uh, other thing would be if that calf's, cow has been in active labor, forcibly uh, trying to expel the calf uh, uh, but not making any progress so she's been actively for half an hour to, to an hour and not making progress uh, then we probably need to look at what's going on or if uh, the cow becomes exhausted or it appears that the calf is getting stressed or if you identify that there's an abnormal presentation such as only one foot's visible or, 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 or maybe it's a the two claws are up indicating that's a, a backwards calf when we go to uh, pull a calf we typically uh, like to, to use a two loops of our chain around that calf's leg both above the fetlock and below the fetlock, and that's going to help decrease any pressure that we put in any one spot, uh, so that we don't damage growth plates and or, or, or pull, the, pull the, the hoof claw wall off of that, of that, off that hoof of that calf. Uh, once you decide to to uh, provide assistance, again, you uh, just like there's there's rules of thumb of, of when to assist the cow. There's some rules of thumb of, of when you, you may, may need to get some some professional assistance, uh, uh, such as a, as a veterinarian and potentially have to have a cesarean section done. Uh, so if, if you've been trying to assist the cow for 30 minutes and you're not, not making progress, uh, then, then it may indicate that, it, that a cesarean section or other professional help may, may be uh, advisable. Uh, if you don't understand what you're feeling, you can't identify all the legs, uh, you, can't, you can't find one, uh, there's more legs than, than what, what you think there should be, the, the head's not uh, uh, being able to fill, those types of things, uh, you, it may help to have some professional assistance. Again, if, if you're uh, uh, trying to pull the calf and, and the cow is, is getting into some stress, uh, you're, you're afraid you, or the calf is getting stressed and you're afraid you might lose one or the other, then that would be a, a good time to have assistance. Or when you make the decision that you're going to be unlikely to be able to deliver this calf vaginally, and the cesarean section is going to be the, the best method. When, we're, when you're pulling on the calf, our general recommendation is about you don't want to put more than about 500 pounds of pressure on that calf, which is about what two men can, can apply manually, which is a lot less than what a lot of our mechanical calf pullers can ex exceed, you know, two, three thousand pounds worth of pressure. Uh, and you need to be very judicious when you're using those mechanical calf pullers that you're not going to damage that calf uh, to too much. So, so uh, anytime you put one of those on, you're going to be using more than 500 pounds. So just be very careful about, about how you use those. Once that calf is born, uh, then, then we need to um, uh, take care of the calf. Uh, again, we want to make sure that we get this calf born alive and then we keep it alive and, and get it to weaning so so making sure that that, that calf it gets dried off that the that the, that the heifer um, mothers up to that calf um, that that calf gets colostrum and, and we'll talk about uh, in, in another presentation about the value of colostrum but even milking that heifer out and, 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 and uh, giving that colostrum to that calf right away just to make sure that we, we, we don't get behind on that calf and make sure that we get that calf 